Hello, everybody. How are you? Hope you're doing well this Friday lunchtime UK time. My name's Carl. Nice to meet you. Um, thank you for joining me here at the Tefl Org on our weekly Q&A session. The topic of today's talk will be what to expect from your first class. And if you've got any questions or any comments about any experience you've had from the first classes that you've taught, that would be great to put in the chat. If you could also put in the chat where you are in the world and say hello, that's great for us to know who's out there and know who's saying hello. I can see some people already saying hello. Tarek, hello. Howda, Eleven, Namaste, Anastasia, David, Shana, Michael, Huda, hello. So thank you very much for joining me. My name is Carl. I'm one of the trainers here at the TEFL Org. I run the courses, um, the practical courses here in Northern Ireland. So if you're ever up near Belfast and you're wanting to become a TEFL teacher, you'll hopefully meet me in days when um, we can all meet up. Um, I have been teaching around the world for a good number of years. I've taught in Japan, Sri Lanka, Vietnam, China for a bit. So I was in uh, Azerbaijan, Kazakhstan, Iraq. I worked in Africa, South Africa for a bit. So um, any questions you might have about teaching around the world, put them in the chat and I will get round to them at all. Maybe you're wanting to get into TEFL and you don't know how to do it. Maybe you've just passed your qualification and you want to get your first job. Um, put them all in the chat and I will get to it. But first of all, I'm going to give a little talk here about um, what to expect from your first class. OK, so for many of us, uh, the first class that you do can be really quite nervous. I've been you can be quite nervous in and I've been teaching 20 odd years and I still get quite nervous whenever I meet a bunch of students for the first time. And do you know what? That is totally natural. Everybody gets really, really nervous. So what do I, as someone that has quite a few qualifications and still have um, and, and, and still meet new students all the time, either online where I teach from here in Northern Ireland or in my face to face classes when they are running? What sort of can I can I advice can I give you? What can I get you to expect on uh, about your first class? So first of all, nerves. OK. The nerves will come both ways. All right. You will be nervous in your first class. Totally natural. And also the students will be nervous. OK. Think about it. Um, the, the students that you are teaching, they may know each other. So you might be in a room, you might walk into a room and everybody in that room knows each other. If you're teaching business English, you might be teaching a class where everybody knows each other. If you're teaching general English or a kids class, they might have been together the term before. They've got you as a new teacher this first time or they may not know each other. OK, if they don't know each other, then of course they're going to be a little bit nervous when you walk into a room where you don't really know people. That is an, is not a natural way of of normal way for most people. And that's the reason why they could be quite nervous. And don't worry about it. Just remember, it's OK for you to be a little bit nervous and also a bit about them. So. For the first class, the first piece of advice that I'd give to you now, this works online, but it also works in a physical classroom. OK, think about your arrival time into the Zoom call or to the Skype call or think about your arrival time into the physical classroom itself. You've got to get the balance right now. Why is that important? Because if you get there too early, and you've got yourself all prepared and you're sitting there and you're waiting for them to arrive. You get one to come in. They're a little bit nervous. You don't know how to deal with them. You've got a hundred things going on in your mind. You, if you get there too early, the nerves might build up a little bit more or you might be the sort of person and I've written there depends on you who likes to get there really early and sit, get yourself all together. Me personally, the first classes I like to arrive just before. OK, just before 
the class, like literally two minutes before. I get all my prep done in the staff room, bring it all in, and then I'm ready two minutes before to get going, all right? I don't like to, in my first class to be there too early, to indulge in small talk with nervous people, that kind of thing, that's me. Some people might like to get there early. So think about your arrival time. Try not to get there too early, obviously don't be late, but give yourself enough time to get rid of the nerves or to not put yourself in a nervous situation where they can build a bit more. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Please, any questions? I can see some questions coming in. Lovely. Carla, that's a great question. Going to get to it in a minute. Okay, think about your arrival time is my first key. Now, I always have my first class in mind, what I'm going to do. And this works online if I've got a group or this also works in a physical classroom. Okay, the, the same thing is the same. The first thing that I go through is the rules of the classroom. So if I'm in a physical classroom, that could be simple things like don't run. Um, it could be things like um, don't eat if you're in a place where they don't want people to eat. If you're online, it could be something on the lines of um, keep yourself on mute until you want to talk. Put your hand up if you want to speak. Uh, use the use the chat function to ask any quick questions. Any of those kind of things depends on the rules. But the key thing of my first class and I do this for everyone is some of the rules have to come from them. Try and get some rules from the students, what they expect from the teachers. OK, it's important. It can't be you putting the rules on them because that is just a bit awful authoritarian. We want them to have some of the rules and we want you to give some of the rules. So one of the things I do is I put them in little groups, say come up with five rules and then I come up with five rules and we put them together to make the 10 rules of the classroom no matter where it is. Okay, so rules. This is, and once you've, once you have this set, this first thing that you're going to do, your first class will be better. Okay, get those rules written down. If you're in a physical classroom, get them up on a big piece of paper that you can hang up in the classroom. If you're in an online classroom, try and get it into a shared document. Try and get, um, so you can sort of show them these are the rules that we have. And look, they're written in this shared document. This is the rules that we're going to follow in this classroom class. Okay. Now, I like to have in my first classroom and generally throughout my course, a lot of forced fun. This is where you try and have fun with students when they don't necessarily feel natural about having fun. I think it's very important to reduce the effective filter. What is the effective filter? Now, in about the 1980s, might have been the 70s, there was a, a very popular linguist um, and he came up with this phrase, the effective filter. And what that meant was you cannot learn a language if you've got this block up that's kind of stopping you. You've got to somehow reduce this block between you and the language that you're going through and you've got to reduce the effective filter. You've basically got to relax in order to learn a language. It's according to this um, uh, linguist whose name was Stephen Krashen, that you, you can't learn a language if you're not relaxed, if you're not happy, if you're not sort of ready to learn. So try and get something in in the first class that has um, reduces the effective filter that you get some sort of fun in, start it off relaxing, start it off calm, start it off fun, basically, all right? Get some sort of um, reduced effective filter in there. Google it, loads of stuff on there. Plan your first few interactions. The, the first few ways you're going to talk to the students, plan it. I, when I started, like to just write down the first few instructions that I was going to give them. OK, so don't I, I would write down, OK, this is what I'm going to say. This is what they're going to do. And actually, in my head, I would actually repeat the phrases that I was going to do and then I would speak them out loud. Because what you don't want to do is expect too much of your students too quickly. OK, don't think that they're going to have lots of language learning skills pretty quickly. They're going to be really confused. They are really going to not know who this big bald guy is in front of them. 
you've really got to make sure that the first few tasks, the first few interactions you do for them are nice and calm, but also they know what they're doing. Get your instructions, the first phrases that you tell them what to do, sorted. Get them some, um, get them, get, get it clear in your mind exactly the phrase you're going to say it and stick to it. Instructions can be a little bit, can, if you start repeating them, if you start rephrasing them, for people learning another language, this can be difficult. So make sure you've got some clear instructions going and you know exactly what you're going to say and concept check them for what you're going to do. Start well. I've written it at the start. I've written it at the end. If you've got that first 10 minutes planned really well, the rest of the class will go quite smoothly. The students will feel confident. You'll feel more confident and get yourself going. Get yourself starting well. OK, good. Um, the first thing to another thing to do. Sorry, not the first thing. Another thing to do in your first classes is to find out what they want. OK, keep the students happy long term by doing exactly what they want. So if they want lots of speaking activities, give them lots of speaking activities. If they think they're getting good value for money, if they think that the class is going to be effective for them, then they will turn up more. They will report back to your managers, to the people employing you that you were a good teacher. It'll be a really good one. OK, keep if you've got kids, keep the parents happy. How do you keep parents happy? You keep them happy by getting the kids to be able to tell the parents what they've learned. I'm a father. What do I ask my kids about her school or his school? I say, what did you learn today? Make sure that your students can tell their kids what you learned today. So if it was vocabulary at the end of the call, end of the class, say today we learned some vocabulary. They'll go out of that first lesson happy, smiley. They'll be able to tell their mum and dad, this is what we learned today. This is the grammar that we learned today. Adults be able to say, we did lots of speaking practice. We did lots of reading practice, whatever it was. We did this grammar point, whatever it was. Keep the students and the parents happy in that first lesson by finding out what they want. OK, do a needs analysis to make sure everything is going OK. All right. Um, oh, sorry, the order went out the way then. I don't know what happened there. Um, the company may that employs you may have given you some idea of what they want. So the company might say, right, these kids need speaking practice. But actually, once you get in there, they might want a little bit of reading as well. They might want a bit of writing, whatever it might be. Make sure that you can keep them happy, because if you've got happy people in that first lesson, you know what's going to happen in the rest of the classes that would um, be able to that would keep it going and that will keep the confidence going throughout the classes. OK, right. I'm now going to turn to some of the lovely questions and answers that are uh, sorry, not the answers. I'm hopefully going to give the answers. Some questions that are coming in. Um, first question we've got there. And if you've got anything about first lessons, that's great. But if not anything else about uh, teaching English a foreign language, just put it in there. Any questions at all? Um, Carla, hello. Uh, how can someone new to teaching overcome shyness and introversion? Thank you. Right. It's, a, it's, a, it's an important question, Carla, because I think that there's lots of different teaching styles. OK. Um, I put on a different persona when I'm talking to you here and when I'm in the classroom. I'm a bit louder. I'm a bit um, wilder with my actions. I probably I probably um, I'm a bit more sort of uh, move moving around a bit more. I'm a bit more physical, that kind of thing. I think it's important that you have a classroom manner and a classroom way that you're happy with, Carla. Now, my wife is quite a quiet individual, but she is also a, a great, fantastic teacher. And I've seen her completely control a class just by clapping her hands once, keeping them all quiet, having that shyness and having that sort of calmness, that quietness is um, works for her really well. OK, the, the shyness in a classroom as a teacher, I think, does go away the longer you do it. The more time you practice it, the, the, the you know, the, at the start, it's going to be quite difficult. But 
get through that first class and you'll be surprised how natural teaching will become to you, Carla. OK, I personally don't think people will necessarily get into teaching if they're really shy. I think that um, it's something that maybe people think they are, but actually once they're in a classroom, the shyness sort of disappears because it's not like a natural um, uh, situation like when you go into a pub or a restaurant or that kind of thing. I think it's sort of more forced and you're, you you do sort of overcome it yourself. OK. Um, Peeling. Hello. Hello from London. How to stand out for a chance to be chosen by students. Now, I'm not quite sure what you mean here, Peeling, but I'm going to sort of think that maybe you work for a company where students choose their teacher, maybe, or you advertise yourself. OK, maybe I don't I don't really know. Um, you advertise yourself in terms of getting online students. I'm not quite sure what you mean here. How to stand out, I think, first of all, is to be friendly. So in your photos, you know, don't be like that in the photos. Try and be a bit, little bit more smiley because people will try and contact people that just look generally a bit friendly, okay? If you're um, doing a little video to try and attract students, you know, put it all on them. Don't say necessarily what you will do, say what the students will be doing in it. So what will the students be doing? You'll be doing lots of speaking practice. You'll be having a chance to correct your errors a lot. You will have uh, lots of opportunity to improve your pronunciation, that kind of thing. Put it on them instead of you. Hopefully that will work for you. OK. Um, Diane, hello, you're in Limavady. That's just down the road from me here in Northern Ireland, if anyone doesn't know. Uh, you wanted 120 hours, are the two days in Belfast included? Uh, no. So our we do a combined course where you would do the online 120 hours and then when they run, at the moment they're not running because of COVID, COVID sorry, you can add on a practical course at the weekends with me in Belfast. Or at the moment, because they're not running the physical classroom uh, courses, you can add on a um practical zoom uh online course okay i'm doing one this weekend with people around the world where you actually get to put into practice what you would learn on the 120 hour course they're great fun we get great feedback from them and it really can help you with in the employability status in order to try and get a job okay um alex hello uh, what do you recommend would be best? You're qualified in TEFL with the 12 hour and the a 12 hour course. Do you mean a 120 hour course, Alex? A 12 hour course uh, doesn't sound that long. Erin, am I getting something wrong there? But I don't think so. I think it means a 120 hour course. You work full time in retail, so I don't get much time to look for work with students. Would it be best to cut my hours down in my current job to look for full time work in teaching? You're stuck. Uh, I think at the moment, Alex, if you've got a very a strong job where you've got money coming in. You might not like it, but if it's a good income, I'd be a little bit wary about going, cutting down your hours straight away, okay? If you're looking to teach online, Alex, in any free time you have, try and build your own website to try and get yourself your own online students, okay? So at weekends, in the evenings or mornings, whenever it is, work out and we've, we've I've done lots of question and answer sessions on this in the past where you might be able to go back and do it but um try and get students at the side also or the other thing you can do is um apply to companies and in those companies you can um say the hours that you're free might be able to work them around your, around your own job if you can cut down your hours in your current job and also keep it secure give it a go but I would definitely make sure that you have got some TEFL hours somewhere before you do that myself. OK, it's a difficult, a difficult um, situation. OK, uh, all right. Good. Good luck with it, though, Alex. Let us know how it goes. Frankie, you give me a massive long question. My my face is going to disappear, but we'll put it up anyway. Hi, Carl. You're nearing the end of your level five TEFL course, uh, end of the month. You're moving abroad. Where would you recommend to start for someone that has no experience and a little nervous? Uh, right. Uh, you want to go abroad. Um, OK, fine. So basically you want some advice on where to go first. OK, Erin, uh, do you want to take the question down so I can uh, see? Hi. Um, right. What I would recommend is, first of all, Frankie, 
the world is still locked down in a big chunk of places. So going abroad at the moment, you haven't got a huge amount of choice in where you want to go. All right. The second thing to so say, imagine if the so first of all, actually, you might want to look at where is open. And I do know that some companies in China and the East are advertising. You have to go into quarantine, that kind of thing. But there are parts of the world where you, it's just impossible to get work at the moment. All right. So, you know, you might want to start online for now. If the world is ready and everybody COVID has disappeared, I think the first thing is where, where do you want to go? OK, do you want to do you want to be in a city where it, you might earn a bit more money um, or do you do you want to be in somewhere a bit more rural where you weren't uh, won't earn as much money, but it might be more your style. So sort of think about, you know, places, for example, Vietnam, where I started teaching, has big cities where you can, um, uh, you know, have a great city nightlife. But there's also teachers I know that that live in some of the rural areas or live in some of the beach areas. OK, um, so it really does sort of depend where you want to go, Frankie. I would look at the adverts look for companies that have been going for quite a while and you'll be able to see that because they quite often say they're established how long they've been running that kind of thing you'll be able to google them and see how many adverts they've had uh because if it's a company that's been going a while they will have you know they'll be ready for frankie and you'll just turn up and everything will be sorted for you all that kind of thing hopefully yeah if it's a newish company they might not be quite as ready for a new nervous teacher if that makes sense thank you right um everyone has to start somewhere wherever you go in the world i'm sure you'll be fine frankie okay it will be absolutely fine you know i i don't know anyone that has sort of started tefl got somewhere and absolutely hated it just make sure you sort of do your research and make sure it's the sort of place that you're at okay i hope it works out for you frankie um trails hello is that your real name trails but anyway hello question you have just had your ef online interview 1am uk time um uh reply to all the interviewers questions but still felt it and then you put in another message could have gone better next week you have an interview with vice principal scorning me and you're pooping your pants trails okay thank you for not for putting that in a way that i can repeat on um, a Facebook live session. OK, so I'm not quite sure what your question is, Trails, but what I would say is, does anybody ever think that a job interview goes well? I'm not so sure they do. You know, I think um, uh, most people think that, that you know, that uh, job interviews, they could have answered quick things a bit better. OK, what I would say is if you've got another interview coming up, think about the questions you were asked today think about see if you can remember any of them write them down because quite often a lot of tefl questions are repeated by employers all around okay so don't worry about it too much trails uh keep it going i'm sure you'll get a job somewhere okay uh timothy hello how do you create rules with students with little or no english language schools right um so let's start with there's a quite a difference between little and no english language schools okay little so for example you might not be able to get them to write it well actually you've got two things they could write it down in their own language and you uh, could translate it i personally don't like that idea okay i just like writing down no eat and you might mime eat you might draw on the on a whiteboard some food with a red line through it something like that if you're sort of trying to say don't be late you could put the time you could put a watch up on the board that kind of thing you could say no five past nine no 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 you can mime that kind of thing all right um so that's it or you could get them to plan in their own language and then they could sort of translate it and feed it back to you in english that kind of thing all right timothy i have taught in many places around the world and i have hardly ever and I mean hardly ever. I think maybe I've only had two classes ever where they have no English. And by no English, I mean zero English. It's just not really a thing around the world. Generally, everybody comes out of high school, primary school even, wherever it is around the world with some English ability. OK, so that just isn't a thing that I've had. OK. If you have had it, then you probably got to make sure that you use the translation software. But I have never, ever 
ever well not ever twice maybe and that was in times where i've sort of gone looking for it okay you know when i've been like my own boss and or it's been like a bit of a contract that i found that i could make a bit of cash from it's i've never ever been given a class by a school where there is no english amongst the students it's just not something i've done okay i hope that answered your question yeah namaste says use posters images there we go fine Benedetta, can I give some examples of first interactions? That's a nice question. So, right, quite often you will find when you've got a first class, because they're so shy, they'll give you quite short answers. Okay, so what you've got to do is try and do some sort of get to know you or get some sort of um, activities going where they have to expand on their answers or use full sentences as best they can. All right. So if it's a low level class, you've got, you know, it would be things like, what's your name? Carl. Try and get them to say, OK, can you use full sentences? Can you say uh, my is and then they've got to fill in the fr the word, give longer sentences, that kind of thing. First interactions can be quite stressful, can be quite um, nervous for them, making sure that they can speak as much as they can uh, to try and get um, the effective filter going and trying to keep them speaking as much as they can. OK, um, good. I hope that's answered your question, Benedetta. Carla, hello. How can you improve for a clear, louder voice in a way that you'll be heard and respected? OK, first off, uh, you'll be surprised how well a stare works, Carla. Probably says a lot more than shouting, you know. You can, you know, a, a, a little clap like that, a tap on the whiteboard, that kind of thing, you know, holding your hand up like that. You'd be surprised how well that works. I, I don't think I've the only times I've ever shouted is when I've had some really young kids that are going to do something crazy and I needed to stop them getting injured. OK, um, so I don't I don't think shouting. I think just using gestures is something that can really help you there, Carla. Maria, hello. Have I used an iPad to teach? Uh, nope, I've never used a tablet to teach. I have only when I teach online, I've only ever used computers. So Windows or when I used to be rich a Mac. OK, um, RB. Uh, sorry, Maria, I should add there, Maria, um, some schools don't like you using tablets. They only if you're teaching online, they only like you using computers. OK, RB, you're really nervous about having to teach the word stress. Do we have to know it for each word accurately? No, not at all. So word stress. Uh, so you can have uh, within syllables which stress uh, which syllable is stressed is said louder than the others. Uh, online dictionaries are great for this, RB. So if you look, if you get a word and a student asks you what syllable should I stress and you say it to yourself and it's not clear to you, look at an online dictionary. Uh, before the syllable, they usually have a, a like a comma. Sorry, a, is that the right? Not a comma, a, spe a single speech mark before the syllable that's stressed. OK. That will help you. What you do need to know, RB, is the word, the syllable stress for the words that you're teaching in that class. So if you're concentrating on some pronunciation in the class, make sure that you know the stress for those words that you're teaching. And you will find that um, textbooks will help you with that. OK. Uh, Trails. Recent news about teaching in China is a no go. China may arrest all foreigners, including teachers. They're going to arrest all what? What for? Trails. I know a guy that started this week teaching in China and is having a great time. So I'm not so sure about that one. Um, Sarah, what if students can't understand your instructions? Firstly, if they can't understand your instructions, maybe you're saying them at a too high a level or the instructions just aren't clear or are too complicated. OK, um, so think about what you're saying and how you're saying it. OK, uh, make sure you've got concept check questions in there and always concept check. That means check understanding of the instructions with some of the weaker students or the troublemakers or the ones not paying attention. So you know what's going on, Sarah. I would first of all check yourself if it's a consistent thing where they can't understand your instructions. If you do get in a, a fuddle with it, 
don't be afraid to stop the activity. Get everybody sat back down and repeat the instructions again. I do that so many times. All right. OK. Facebook user. Hello, Facebook user. Um, you'll be heading to a job in Japan. Any tips on teaching Japanese students for the first time? Yes. Uh, don't believe all the stereotypes about Japanese students that you think you know. From my time in Japan, they are some of the coolest, friendliest and sociable students I've ever had. Um, just keep them talking as much as you can. Get them talking quickly. They like to have fun. They're good fun. OK, that's my advice to you. Facebook user. A. Hello, A. A. Hello. Hi, A. Uh, m much better than B. Is it possible to get short term contracts for uh, for three, six months abroad? It's very difficult to get short term contracts. Um, if you're in the European Union, the best way to and you've got an EU passport, the best way to get a six month contract would be to go and work uh, to advertise to uh, apply directly to some schools, pay a cheap flight yourself and get out there. Um, if I'm in the UK and I'm going to uh, the, the East, to Asia or to Central America, that kind of thing, short term contracts are, are generally and generally and no, not always. I've seen some in Japan, but they're quite few and far between. Generally, schools want you to stay for at least 12 months. OK, um, Colin, I've I think I've answered that question a little bit, but I'm just going to talk about it a bit more. If they have no English language knowledge, the first thing for you to do is to keep it to basic vocabulary. If they really have no English language knowledge, and that's really rare for people abroad. It's happened to me a couple of times in the UK. I've had students in the UK with no English language knowledge, but I've never had it when I've been abroad or when I've taught online. Um, first of all, start at vocabulary level by just posters or, or using realia, real things. Mobile phone, glasses. Okay, you glasses. You know, lots of just lots of lots of pointing, lots of real use. I, quite a lot of people think that they're going to get students with zero English, and I honestly, it's really rare that that happens. Colin, low levels, yes, but no English language hardly ever happens. Okay, um, Erin. Hello, you're very close to finishing the course and you were wondering if I'd recommend joining an agency first to get some experience or going freelance. Uh, I think if you're if you're new, the, the first thing to do is to is to try and get some work through a recruit a, a, like a, a company or a recruiter. OK, I would be very wary of giving money to any agencies, Erin. I hope you, that's not that's something that creeps up sometimes, but don't give money to recruiters. Just um, uh, make sure, you know, they'll find you a job, they'll find you students and then generally they get the money from the students, not from you. OK, so I would recommend doing both. Basically, if you want to teach online, building up your own website so you become freelance, but also at the same time working for someone if you're new. OK, A. Hey, hello. Is it possible to teach in Asia without a degree? Uh, you've completed your first year, but you're currently on a gap year. OK, so does that mean you're about to do your degree, which is which is great? Uh, oh, you're about to finish your degree. Now, I'm just trying to let me just get up the website. Uh, so what I would recommend to everybody is if you've got some questions like this, we've got lots of stuff on our TEFL org, the TEFL org website. OK, so if you go to um, www.tefl.org slash blog, B-L-O-G. If you go to that, then we've got a search post there. You can type into that, no degree, and you will see lots of information that will come up um, on the website about how to teach around the world. If you do want to go to Asia, Asia is, is a little bit more difficult without a degree, but have a look at Japan. You can go there on a working holiday visa. You can get some work in um, Japan a little bit more easily without a degree than you can in other places. OK, good. Um, Alex, I think I've answered your question as well. Um, Facebook user again. Hi from Scotland and hoping to soon obtain my work visa to go to Taiwan. Lovely. Taiwan's a great part of the world. Work with points. I'm not quite sure. Uh, do you mean points as in you give the students points so that you can reward them? Yes. OK. 
Uh, do I like this method? Yeah, I do like this method. I think, especially with kids, if you've got a bit of competition in the classroom, generally does um, make it more fun, generally does uh, reduce the effective filter that I was talking about earlier, also can help you to keep control. So yeah, I personally do like the points method. Okay. Um, namaste. You've just started learning your 160 hour online course. You're a bit nervous about the teaching plan. Uh, right. There are lots of websites about with templates for um, learning, for doing lesson plans. But if you're on our course, the TEFL Orgs 120 hour, the 160 hour course, uh, the 200 hour course, just or the advanced course, you don't really, I think, need to look elsewhere. Just look at what we've given you and what you have, what you can get on our courses. There should be enough on there for you to get through what you need to do. All right. OK. RB. Is it realistic to get a job in this? Is it like a regular wage? Uh, is the pay regular? And could I pay my bills with this job? Right. First question, RB, is I don't know how big your bills are. Um, you know, Tefl, you're, you're a teacher. Teachers are never going to be millionaires on the whole. I don't know many millionaire teachers. Um, so it's not a sort of industry where you're going to get massively rich. It is a sort of industry where you can make a difference and you can have a bit of fun. Um, and yes, I have been doing it for 20 years. And yes, I have had regular wage all the way through that a little bit when COVID went a bit crazy. Last March, April was difficult for me. Um, you got to be have realistic goals, though, RB. If you're a new teacher and you're teaching online, you're not going to get lots of hours quickly. OK, so but you can with time and effort build up to having a full time work from it. RB. I hope that answered your question. OK, uh, Iman, hello. You're going through your 120 hours. You, it's awesome. Good. I'm glad uh, that is my goal. What's your recommended after course? And what about business course? So, Iman, I don't know what your background is. Uh, if you've got a background in business, then, yeah, learn how to teach business. English can be quite profitable, can give you lots of hours, that kind of thing. Um, so if that's the sort of thing I would definitely recommend if you've got a business uh, background. Yep. Go for it. In terms of choosing the modules that you might want to add on afterwards, I would really recommend one of our practical online ones, um, Iman, because you'd be with someone like me on the TEFL org, one of the trainers who's got quite a good number of qualifications and quite a lot of experience, can answer all your questions, can get you through it. OK, Iman, so I would uh, recommend doing something like the practical course first as an added extra. OK. Um... Uh, Huda, how do you connect with me this weekend? You completed your 100 hour course, we're still waiting for a 20 hour practical course, which was cancelled in December. Huda, con contact the office, um, info at Tefl org, okay? And, and, uh, They'll be able to help you if you do it sort of now. They'll be able to answer because there'll still be somebody in there. OK, I don't think you're on. My, are you on my list? I'm not sure if you are on my list uh, for this weekend. You're making me check now. Uh, Huda, I, your name sort of rings a bell. Huda, I don't know if you're on my lane on my list. Let me check. Uh, da, 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 da. No, Huda, you're not. You need to contact the office. Uh, info at tefl.org and they'll be able to um, get your uh, details. Okay. Um, Barbara, hello. Uh, when teaching privately, what are the current rates per lesson or course? How do you decide? <laughs> Difficult one, this. Uh, Barbara, where do you live in the world and what hourly rate are you happy to work for is my first question. Uh, I don't live in the most expensive part of the UK, but I live in the, the part I, the place I live in is more expensive than certain parts of India or China or Africa, that kind of thing. So the amount of money that I need in order to get by is uh, more than other parts of the world. So that's the first thing. Only work for what you're happy to work for. OK, um, then I look at my competitors and I decide if I can add value because I'm qualified, for example, or I've been doing it longer and then I charge a bit more and I, I just go from there. All right. Generally, the more you can give the student, the higher the rate of you can offer. OK. Um, all right. Neil. Hello, are job offerings plenty for TEFL certified persons who don't have a first degree? Um, 
I'm not going to lie to you, Neil. There's more jobs available for people with degrees than there are for people without degrees. That is the nature of the industry. Um, however, I do on my courses have quite a few people without degrees who find work. It can take you longer and it can be a little bit disheartening at times. But if you keep at it, you will find work if you don't have a degree. If you want to go abroad, Neil, and I'm not sure where you are in the world, it, it looks quite nice there. So you might be in Australia or somewhere. But if you're in the UK or in Europe, you don't necessarily need to have a degree to go and work in places. Whereas in Asia, uh, not always, but most of the time, you do need to have a degree in order to get the work visa. OK, so so be a bit more flexible. My number one thing I say to people without a degree is be flexible. Don't have your heart set on one place. Don't have your heart set on one job. You've you, you know, you've got to have a flexibility and then you'll then you'll get work. OK, uh, good. Uh, my questions just dropped. Sandrine. Hello. Another long one. You stopped working for nearly 20 years to be a stay at home mother. It sounds like you were working. Although I'm proud of this privilege, learned a lot of experience going to courses. There's a huge gap in my CV. Would this impede my chance of finding work as a TEFL teacher? No, I don't think so. What's your advice, please? Thank you. No, I don't think so. I, when I've recruited people before, that doesn't that sort of thing doesn't bother me. Um, have a big chunk, you know, say in the CV, this is what I was doing. OK, did you um, teach your kids? Did you do any? And, you know, did you teach other kids? Did you look after other kids? That kind of thing can all come into it. That can really be part, you know, highlight that on your CV. Um, you're doing the right, you know, if you're, if, you're now, if you're now a little bit worried, you could do something like one of our practical online courses and that will help you um, get some more confidence and we'll also be able to show you on your CV that you are ready to go. You want to teach again, okay? Um, odds ratio. Hello. Uh, remember that name. Uh, my background is science. Are there students seeking English language support from a science perspective, e.g. help checking? So what you might want to look at, Mr. Odds ratio or Mrs. Odds ratio, I'm not quite sure which one it is, is um, looking at uh, um, EAP. That's English for academic purposes. You might be able to get some work at science university. You might be able to help students who are learning science courses in English, but English isn't the first language. So look at English for academic purposes. And yes, you might be able to uh, get some work that way. OK, good afternoon, everybody. Hello, Karina. Uh, Naina. Hi, Carl. How do you convince a language school company to give you a chance to start getting your first experience in TEFL? Because most won't give you a second thought. I'm not sure if most won't give you a second thought. I think, Naina, the first thing you need to do is, um, you know, make sure that you follow clearly their application purpose. OK, make sure that you are doing exactly what they want. Make sure that you know the good fundamentals of TEFL and you get that into your trial lesson or the trial video that you would send them okay and make sure that you don't have too much teacher talking time make sure that the students that you're pretending to teach or you are teaching if it is a live lesson get a chance to speak not too much of you remember it's not all about you it's about getting the students to learn okay so that's my key for anybody applying all right uh, Bean Beats. I'm loving all the names today. Bean Beats. Hello. How do you go about? I feel really boring with my name, Carl. How do you go about teaching initially when the student or students don't speak a word of English to begin with and you may not be fluent in their language? Again, not something that I have ever come across. Um, perhaps there's this new world out there that I just don't know about. Um, so again, you, you can... You know, stick to vocabulary, stick to very simple, simple words before you start adding in any grammar or any sentences, that kind of thing. Lots and lots of repetition, lots and lots of um, uh, pictures, realia, that kind of thing. Some total physical response. Google that TPR. Get yourself going in that one. I have at times used translation. I don't really have a problem with translation software for really, 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 really low level ones. You know, go down that route, Beams. You'd be surprised, OK, that this isn't really such a thing. OK. Um, Arnold and Jose uh, Buccelli. Lovely. Uh, you happily making your way through your course. Your example lessons are with intermediate students. What about day one with non-English speakers? That's making your... Again, I think I've said this a few times. It's not really a thing. 
Good luck with it. Farang, hello. Uh, you don't have a degree, but your wife is from Thailand and you're planning to move out there in the next five years. Will level five course help me get a visa? Or do we need to? Oh, good question. Well, if you if your wife's from Thailand, you shouldn't need a visa, shouldn't you? Should you, Farang? You can just go in on a spouse visa. I don't think. I, I, I think, which would be fine. I'm, but I don't know Thai immigration law. So I'm sorry. Okay, I don't know. Frank, I feel like if I say the answer to that, I will probably be wrong. So Google might be your friend there, Frank. Sorry. Um, Carmelina, hello. Can you apply for jobs that only want degree holders? You've only got your home to certificate, but also experience. You're hesitant to apply. Well, what's the harm in applying, Carmelina? You know, you know, they might be that week or that month wherever the advert is they might be a bit short of teachers and they might be able to the only problem is if you're applying for jobs where they they need to get you a work visa for a country and if you haven't got a degree that's out there but definitely for online jobs go for it okay come in good uh llama advice on how to control a class full of high school students i think a few weeks ago i did a lot of about classroom management might be worth going back and looking at my video a couple of weeks ago about that llama um uh, my advice uh, is is points. Uh, my advice is to uh, not uh, embarrass them too much in front of their friends. So if you need to talk to them one one, get them outside, talk to them, or you know take them to one corner of the room if you're a bit worried about taking students outside, that kind of thing. Um, but points for good or bad behaviour, add on points for good behaviour, take away points for bad behaviour, that kind of thing. I think works really well. Uh, Dan, would I suggest a training school like English First? Or are you making me hungry with your Big Mac there, Dan? Um, yeah, I think somewhere like English First is a great company to work for. One, My very first TEFL job was teaching English as a foreign language for EF in South Wales, and I loved it. Lama, um, what would I do if a student asks you a question you do not know the answer to it happens to me constantly? So... What I do is I say, OK, thank you. That's a great question. But today's lesson is about the past continuous, not about the past perfect continuous, which is what I think you've asked me. So if we could just stay on point and if we could just finish this activity, that would be great. You let them finish the activity, you turn around, you run to your computer, you quickly Google what the answer is. Then you maybe slip it in a bit later, that kind of thing. All right. Most important thing is just to stay on point for the lesson that you're teaching right now. Teachers don't know everything. And that's OK to not know that. Um, and it's also OK to say to them, do you know what? I'm really sorry. I don't know that. Carry on doing this. Then I'm going to Google it and then I'm going to be able to tell you. All right. Good. Uh, Colin, would I use phonics flashcards in a classroom? Yeah, I. Uh, so phonics is um, for anybody that doesn't know, are the sounds of a language. And in English, there are a number of sounds. I've forgotten the number right now, but we have something called the phonetic alphabet. And that can quite often be put up on a poster in the back of a classroom or you could hold up the sound, that kind of thing. If you've got an interactive whiteboard, you could get it up on there or project to that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, I think anything where you put some sort of visual emphasis to a sound is a good thing. Helps with different types of learning styles, that kind of thing. Um, Colin, quite a lot of students learn they try to learn the pronunciation of English using the phonetic alphabet. So you'll be surprised how many actually sort of know it. OK, uh, good. Sandrine, which level should you teach your students when you hesitate between two levels? Um, so are you saying you're not sure what level they are? Personally, I go for the more difficult one. If, you, if you're not sure if they're elementary or pre-intermediate, I would put them into a pre-intermediate class because it's better for them to be pushed to make it a bit harder than it is to just trundle along in an easy one. OK, good. Uh, James, hello. You're wondering if you could do a future webinar about my experiences in the various countries you have taught and different aspects of life teaching English abroad. James, I'd love to. Um, I just worry that that would sort of turn into a presentation about my life, which does anybody really want to hear that? I'm not sure anybody would. I'll speak to Erin and Alan who run these uh, webinars and choose the topics and see if they think it's a good one. OK, uh, good. Uh, lovely questions. I'm just trying to find someone. Carol, hello. You've completed the 120 hours last summer, but you haven't yet done anything with the certificates. Why not, Carol? Why not? Have you been lazy or has there been a pandemic on? In the UK, what is the best way to find some one-to-one -one private students or maybe two at a time? 
Uh, right. So if you're actually, do you want students that are actually in the UK? Uh, I would go on things like on Facebook. You could, for example, I find students through Italian students living in Northern Ireland. I get Italian students through that way. So I sort of find groups where they're all talking and then I try and teach them like that either online or face to face. Uh, you can also advertise on Gumtree uh, or like local classifieds, that kind of thing. That works really well. Um, but obviously, of course, you can also advertise to get students outside of the UK. All right. But social media is your friend there, Carol. OK. Uh, oh, we've, Melanie, we were doing so well. I can't believe you're going to ask this question. Post Brexit in Europe with a UK passport, can schools get you a work visa, which means you can stay longer than a 90 day restriction in the Schengen area? You want to live and work in Spain? Thanks, Melanie. Um, I don't know the answer to that, Melanie, yet. Sorry. But what I would say is schools don't like spending money on you if they could spend money, if they don't need to. If that makes sense. Um, so I'm, I'm not so sure about that. Many, okay you know i don't i don't like this brexit thing <laughs> makes me sad uh okay thank you um well not thank you for that question many i didn't like that question at all uh sandrine uh can a level five tefl certificate be considered by employers as a university degree bachelor of arts in europe <laughs> hmm it's a degree level certificate in terms of the difficulty but the problem is um i I, I think the length doesn't count as a three year degree and quite often people, employers want three year degrees. I'm not sure, Erin, I don't know whether you know that and you can put it in the chat for me or anything like that. But I, I, I think it's a similar level, but it's not the same because of the length of time. OK, I think that that is the answer. OK, uh, good luck with it, though, Sandrine. Um, Bean Beats again. Hello. Uh, uh, Erin has said there that it does have to be a degree. So sorry, uh, Sandrine, doesn't count. Um, uh, Bean Beats, is 120 hour enough to start working straight away and following completion? You already have a degree in philosophy, creative writing. Yeah. So if you've got yourself a degree, get your 120 hour course, get that certificate, get yourself teaching. Very easy. Okay. All right. Erin, hello. Um, what did you mean by not giving agencies money? Do I get charged for doing right? So some there are some websites out there where they will say a company will say, give us two hundred and fifty dollars and we'll find you a TEFL job. For example, I would not um, give them any money. I've never, ever paid to get a job and I have worked for agencies, if that makes sense. Erin. So if, if you've got alarm now, they might ask you to pay up front for things like visas or sometimes flights, but but check if they'll then reimburse you for the flights. OK, get that written down somehow. Um, th but be, be very wary of anyone that says, give us some money, we'll find you a job. In all my years, I, I've never had to do that. I hope that answers your question. Aaron. Um, RB. Uh, can I get get time extended on the course of breathing? Yeah, for sure. If something like that happens, email the office RB. We're really friendly. Um, the people that work in the office will definitely be able to help you with that kind of thing, I'm sure, RB. OK, uh, the most important thing is to tell the tutors, tell the office if something like that happens to you. OK, all right. Uh, no problem, Trails. Um, James, I'm not quite sure what the practical list is. Is there some sort of practical list going on that I've not heard? um about bean beats the 20 hours practical course in addition to the 120 hour course so uh yes we have um and if you go to our website again um you'll be able to find uh some i'm just trying to multitask uh you'll be able to see i don't know if it's going to share hopefully it will You'll be able to see some TEFL courses. If you go to tefl.org slash courses, uh, TEFL courses, look for combined classroom and online TEFL courses. So you click on that uh, up here in the corner, give you some information and you can just go for the 120 hour course, which is fine. You know, you'll get work with that. However, some employers do like people that have got some practical experience. Um, you can do that and then you can also add on um, 
some sort of uh, module, either a weekend one or a three day one, that kind of thing to give you some actual practical experience with someone like me. OK, uh, Nathan, any advice for a newbie taking on? Oh, sorry, I missed your question, Hannah. I'll do Nathan now. Uh, sorry, Aaron, <laughs> my fault. Any advice for a newbie taking on an online teaching interview? Yet yeah, be friendly, be calm. Um, think about, you know, before your interview, one of the most common questions is talk me through a lesson plan you've designed. So make sure you've got that right in your head so you can go through the stages from uh, presentation through to um, free practice in, and you can talk it through quite clearly, more clearly than I'm talking right now, Nathan. And one of the other questions that I get asked or I ask quite a lot is how do you get students speaking? And you could talk about being friendly, being nice, all that kind of thing. Good. Hannah, sorry. Uh, you know a degree helps, but does the degree need to be in, in teaching? You're looking at doing a degree in Spanish arts and humanities. Would this still benefit me? Yep. Generally, it's any degree. Any degree plus the teaching one. Okay. Uh... Beam, does the level five qualification, Beam, it sounds like you've got loads of questions about this, but I would go on to it. But uh, the level five is our advanced one, is, is the advanced one, okay? Go onto our website, tefl.org, uh, and have a look at the courses in that corner. Loads of information on there, okay? You can, you can find lots of information there, okay? Lama, what is the difference between the level five and 120 hour virtual TEFL course? You're a fresh business graduate inside a slightly teacher career with 120 hour course. Right. You know, listen, everybody, the 120 hour course can get people up and running teaching quite quickly. All right. Now, the, the thing situation is, as teachers, we're expected to learn more and more and more. And some companies would like people to have advanced teaching qualifications. That's why the that's why we offer the level five advanced one to people. OK, um, but. If you're new to TEFL or you want to get up and going quite quickly or you've you're a bit financially constrained, the 120 hour course where you learn online um, will get you a teaching job. OK. Uh, are the TEFL videos you've just taken with the 120 hour course program available on YouTube? Um, so uh, I'm not sure if they're on our website. I don't think they are. Are they, Aaron? Uh, they can be downloaded, apparently, James. So, yes, they can be downloaded. There's your answer. Right. About three or four more minutes, then we're done. Um, good. I'm. Um, thank you. Uh, uh, Trails. EF Online Teacher said no to you because you don't have a bachelor's degree. Um, okay. Well, they companies have their own limits on what they take as degrees okay we, we unfortunately don't have any control over that okay you know look for other companies all right good 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 hello everybody i think that's it i can't see any more questions uh everybody lots of questions about not having a degree i really recommend you go onto our blog page um if i just quickly show you that guys if you go to um tefl.org blog and at the top here uh, you've got TEFL courses, new to TEFL locations, scroll across to blog and in the blog type in uh, no degree uh, in the search box and you, you'll see stuff there about their teaching English abroad with no degree. Um, uh, you know, there's lots of stuff in there about not having a degree. All of these are relevant. I recommend you have a look through them all. There's uh, lots of information on there about people who don't have a degree and how they can find work. OK, I have trained personally lots of people without degrees who've gone on to be TEFL teachers. OK, um, you don't. OK, so just that's a good thing to have a look at. All right. I think we're going to run out of time. Um, thank you, everybody. I'm sorry if I did not get to your question. Um, let me just go back to our theme, which was, um, I've totally forgotten what was our theme. Our theme was what to expect from your first class. Basically, what I would say to you guys is just have it quite well prepared, get them speaking, get them friendly, get, get you know, look friendly, get them talking, get them doing something kind of fun, make sure you've got the rules nailed down and, 
just be wary that they're going to be a little bit nervous having this uh, foreigner or person they don't they've never met before in front of them. So that's OK. It's OK for you to be nervous. It's totally natural. People get nervous all the time. Planning takes away the nerves. So just get yourself going, get yourself in there, start strongly and it will all be fine. OK, uh, thank you, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. I can see some of the thank yous coming in. That's no problem at all, everybody. The questions are great. I'm really sorry if I didn't get to your question. Um, we have lots of these videos from previous weeks. We've been doing them for months and months and months now. So go back and have a look at any of them um, previously and see if they cover the questions you want. If you also want to know more info about our courses or you want to become a TEFL teacher, send us a message either through the website or through the Facebook Messenger system or YouTube, do some comments, that kind of thing. Um, if it's not me doing another one next week, it'll be someone else. Um, thank you for the idea of the theme. I, I might do it. I'll talk to Aaron and Alan. And um, thank you very much for tuning in, guys. We're here. Any questions you have, please put them in the um, message. Uh, go on our website. We will helpfully answer them. Cheers, guys. Have a good weekend. Look after yourselves. Bye.